Were you recently told that you are now the Google admin for your school or business? This can be a challenge if you don't have an IT background. Here are five essential tips to help you feel more confident in your new role. Hi, my name is John Sowash. Welcome to the Google Admin Bootcamp. If you are looking at the admin console for the first time, I would recommend that you customize the view to simplify it. Right now I'm logged in and Google likes to show you absolutely everything and it can be a little overwhelming. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide some unnecessary things. I'm gonna close this slide out over on the right side and you can see all these different sections of the admin console, organizational units and data migration. And each of these is a whole section in and of itself. I want to collapse down a lot of these sections so that I can just see the individual areas of the console. That is how I prefer to look at the admin console. It hides a lot of clutter and unnecessary information. And now I'm ready to click on users to add people or um, manage my devices by clicking uh, into the device section. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a vertical navigation as well. And this is the exact same thing in the center and on the left, it's just personal preference. Um, you know, if you're going into the user section of the console, that left navigation will uh, remain present. And this allows you to quickly access another section of the console without having to go back to the main screen. People have personal preferences. Some people prefer to go to the main screen and, and move to a different area. Others use that left side navigation. You can show and hide that left side by clicking on the hamburger button up in the top left. Uh, that'll give you a little more space for other content. I'm going to navigate back to the home screen and the easiest way to do that is just to click on the admin logo up in the top left corner. What you see on my screen is what a super administrator should have access to. Super admins have complete and full control over your Google Workspace domain. There is nothing you cannot do. This is a great privilege and tremendous responsibility. If you don't see all of the elements that are listed on my screen, you may have a reduced administrative role. You can check out the roles and who they're assigned to by clicking on the admin role section of the console. There are lots of different roles here. You can even create custom roles, but there's one at the very top called super administrator. If you are the primary admin for Google Workspace, then you should probably have super admin access. Best practice is that there should be at least two users who have super admin privileges. This is to resolve any issues that might happen. If you get locked out, you can log into the other account and enable it. I have two super admin accounts in my domain, my personal one, and then an administrative account that I can log into if needed. It is not recommended that people share a super user account. Um, every change that is made in the admin console is logged and can be reviewed. But if you have multiple people signing into the same account and making changes, it's impossible to know who actually made the change. So if it's you and someone else who's managing your Google Workspace domain, each of you should have your own account. Now, as a super user, it's very important that you protect your account. You need to make sure you have a very strong password, and I would strongly encourage you to turn on two-factor authentication to prevent someone from gaining access uh, to your super admin account. That's a very simple process to do. I'll link to a video in the description that will show you how to turn on two-factor authentication. I'm going to head back to the home screen. And this time I'm going to click on account settings. This is something that you should review at least once a year. Inside of account settings will be your primary administrative contact information and a secondary off domain contact. If for some terrible reason your account is hacked, you lose access to your Google Workspace domain, this is the email that Google will reach out to to resolve the issue and give you access back. My third tip for navigating the admin console is to use the search, but not the one at the top of the page. Google does have search in the admin console, and this is fine for searching for users. You can even search for devices by serial number, but it's not the best at pointing you to a particular setting or policy that you know is in there. And this is a constant source of frustration. I wish the search was better. 
my strategy is to use the on page search. So I'm looking for a policy right now that allows app controlled updates. I know this policy is related to devices. So I'm in the device section of the console and I'm in the uh, device settings. I know it's in here, but this, this, page, I mean, it's hundreds and hundreds of settings long. I'm going to press control F, which is find on page. And then I'm just going to search for some words that I know are in the setting that I'm looking for. And it'll highlight all of the results that match and take you right to that section. I'm like, ah, that's it. So tip number three, use the search, but not the one at the top of the page. Before we get to tip number four, I would love to know what you would like to learn more about inside the admin console. Leave me a comment, let me know, and I'll try my best to make a future video about it. Tip number four is pretty straightforward. You need to click the save button. It is so easy to get so focused on changing policies and making adjustments that you forget to click save. The Google Admin Console will automatically time out after a relatively short period of time. So even while you're going through a page, if you don't press save or refresh the page in some way, you won't be able to save your work without logging back in. And this is incredibly frustrating to lose all that hard work that you've done. I would recommend that every time you make a change to a policy that you click that save button up in the top left corner to make sure that you don't lose your work. Now, I just told you to save often, but there is one important thing I want you to verify before you click that save button. Tip number five is always double check the organizational unit that you're applying a policy to. Anytime you navigate into various sections of the admin console, you should see this main section kind of towards the left side of your screen that will list your organizational units, groups, and users. Organizational units are the backbone of Google Workspace. They're basically folders in which you place devices or users, and then you apply policies to those folders. By default, when you navigate to a new area of the admin console, it's going to revert back to the root of your domain. And that means whatever change you make is going to be, apply, be applied to every single user in your organization. That's typically not what you're trying to do. So before you click the save button and adjust the policy, double check to make sure that you've selected the OU that you're trying to change. Are you trying to make a change for staff, for students, for administrators? Select the right OU, then click the save button. Organizational units are a very important topic. I've created an entire video that will walk you through some key questions to consider to make sure that you have the right OUs to manage your users and devices. You can check out that video on the screen. And if you'd like some hands-on help in navigating and setting up Google Workspace for your school or business, check out the Google Admin Bootcamp, my comprehensive virtual course on navigating the admin console. There's a link in the video description.